Hello, this is again Dr. Claudine Raura, Viva at Sakura, and welcome to my channel. Uh, we are going to discuss today how to prepare for your procedure. There's so many questions on how to do, what to expect, and what I'm going to do here. I'm going to run down this uh, video for you to know how to prepare yourself for your liposuction procedure or any other procedure in that now. Room. Number one, okay? be emotionally, psychologically, and mentally ready for your procedure. Okay? Most of the patients are actually either scared or excited. Aww. Scared especially if it's their first procedure. Excited if it's actually it's more multiple procedures already. <laughs> Time comes near, they become excited, they become scared. Okay? So others have some blood pressure, others are nervous, others chicken out. That's what I mean by being mentally, emotionally, and psychologically ready for the procedure. Especially if you're going to be undergoing a tummy tuck, it's actually a major procedure. Everybody is excited, everybody is nervous, everybody is scared. Don't worry, we're all in this together. We're actually doing it in the hospital. We're going to be ensuring that everything is safe for you. So, for patients, it's going to be hard if you're chicken out on the same on the exact same day. It's going to be hard. Sayang yung schedule. Mahirap makahanap na ibang replacement patients for you. And sayang yung oras ng doctor mo. Also, sayang din yung oras mo. As I always tell my patient, the earlier you do it, the longer you will actually enjoy the result. Number two, be financially ready. This is an aesthetic procedure. Okay? It is not life-saving. This is an aesthetic procedure. is actually more expensive than other surgical procedures. Finances or the pricing will actually depend from surgeon to surgeon, depending on their specialty, years of practice, and how they actually do the procedure. If there's actually machine involved, or is actually technology involved, or skill involved into that. So, don't look only on the price because the price, as I said, varies from surgeon to surgeon. At the same time, the technique or the results actually also vary from surgeon to surgeon. Okay, Not all surgeons or not all liposuctions are done the same. So, iba ang gawa ni Dr. A, iba ang gawa ni Dr. B, iba ang gawa ni Dr. C. So, it always depends. That's why there are actually variations in actually how much they price. Usually, there is a peg. Others can be higher, others can be lower, okay? Just don't go for the always lower price. So, there must be something in it. Mung bakit siya mas mura. And then again, if it's a higher price, there must be something in it if it's actually more expensive, okay? In my case, I do it in the hospital. So, it's a hospital-based surgery. So, your professional fees and hospital bills are charged separately. Ah. Number three, manage expectations. Now, for your procedure, the results always vary, even if the procedure is a standard one. For example, you see in the video or in the model, magaganda payat na payat sila if this is the result. Then when it comes to you, medyo bakit iba? Of course, you have to take into consideration, okay, um, body types, no, weight, maybe you're fatter than the others, and the other one is actually slimmer than this one, maybe it's taller, uh, more lengthier. So, as I said, you have to manage your expectations. Your result cannot be the same exact result as the other one. Okay? So, hindi ganun. This is not like a magic one. Then, ganda mo na, sexy, sexy na. No, it is a process. It is a process because you have to go through the process of wound healing. Okay? So, matagal talaga. It takes around four to six months before you can actually see your final result. Why? Because that's just how the body heals. So, don't come and tell me, Oh, doktora, malaki pa rin. And that's just, just actually two days after. No, that's normal. That's actually how the body heals talaga. Number four. Okay? Prepare yourself. Of course, we do our laboratory tests. Okay, you have your blood test, you have your ECG, you have your x-ray, so that we actually know if everything is normal inside. We take your blood pressure, we take your bleeding time, clotting time, the bleeding parameters, so that we actually know if we're going to be expecting some bleeding or not. Preferably, if we're expecting like a, a big form of lipo, please do take some iron supplements. Okay, iron ferrosulfate uh, with folic acid, uh, two tablets uh, a day. Preferably about two or three weeks before. Okay, so that we can actually build up on our hemoglobin because we are actually expecting some blood loss. No aspirin, no vitamin E, and no herbal medications because these ones gives you a higher tendency for bleeding. Okay, so bleeding tendencies natin yung mga vitamin E, aspirin, and other herbal medications. At the same time, smoking. 
smoking is equivalent to poor wound healing. Okay? Especially if it's a cutting procedure like a tummy tuck or a breast augmentation or anything with an implant type, even, even nose. Okay? When you're actually a smoker, poor wound healing because it actually suffocates the tissues. Okay? Wala masyadong blood soup, wala masyadong oxygenation and uh, nicotine and all that uh, toxins in your smoke really affects wound healing. Number five, what to bring on the day itself. Bring extra loose clothing. Okay? So, either a loose shirt for men, okay? Drawstring pants. Drawstring pants or anything that is loose. Don't bring jeans, especially the ones with a, with a belt because it will be a very bad redraping. For women, long maxi dress. For men, no pajamas, uh, drawstring pants, front button shirts para mas madaling uh, magbihes. Please bring water and food because immediately after when you wake up, since you've been fasting for so long, you're going to be very, very hungry. It's best that we have something already with you, a sandwich or water, so that when you wake up and you're actually able to eat, you can eat already. Number six, on the day itself, what do we do? Okay, if it's surgery, we need NPO. NPO means nothing per orem, nothing by mouth for at least six hours. Usually, so if your procedure is around nine o'clock in the morning, your last meal is around 12 midnight. Okay, so nothing after, no water, no food until your procedure. So nothing. Okay. Pag uminom ka, if you take, if you drink, or if you eat in between, it already again extends the fasting procedure. So at least six hours, nothing per orem. Okay? No food, no water, no smoking, no candy, no anything like that. Um, for women, please remove the nail polish because we need that for the pulse oximeter. Okay? So, no nail polish. Shower. Shower before the procedure and also at the same time, please shave down under. Okay? Para malinis na tayo for that procedure. Please bring a companion. If it's an outpatient, no driving. Okay? So, you cannot drive yourself. Either bring a driver or you can just get grabbed so that you can actually go home. And if it's just local anesthesia, you're awake, no problem. You can just do it like on your own. I'm here, you go home on your own. Okay? If it's under anesthesia, sedation, or um, general anesthesia, preferably somebody would need to accompany you. Because you actually wake up, you're still going to be a little bit groggy, especially if it's just an outpatient. Or if you're going to be staying overnight, it's a good thing that you have your companion with you who can actually assist you or dress you or, you know, assist you in everything. To watch more videos, please click that button down there. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the Fat Soccer channel. And again, this is the Fat Soccer, Dr. Claudine Raura saying, see you in our next episode. Bye-bye.